In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating a feature that only exists in Affinity Designer. It allows you to do all kinds of cool things like create offsets between objects in a non-destructive way. And if you can see what I've done here with this text design, I have some of these letters overlapping the other letters. And between the overlapping areas, you can see some empty space in there. I created that out of a non-destructive offset. To show you what I mean, I'm gonna select this letter right here. And if I grab my contour tool, I can change the size of this. I can make this larger or smaller, and you can see that this is a non-destructive offset that's creating negative space between those two letters. And this is thanks to a certain blend mode in Affinity Designer known as the Erase Blend Mode. And I've used it in other tutorials to do things like apply textures to objects without having to use messy and CPU intensive Boolean operations. And in this demonstration, I'll be showing you how to use the same feature to create something like this here where we have this offset text with overlapping letters. So getting us started in a new document, the first thing I'll do is just demonstrate how this works, and then I'll give you a working example just to give you some context. So I'm gonna grab one of the shape tools, I'll click and drag to draw a rectangle, and I'll make this red, and I'm gonna grab the ellipse tool, and I'm gonna draw an ellipse on top of that, and I'm gonna make this one blue just to differentiate it. And I'll grab my select tool, and with the object selected, I'll come over here to the layer menu, and I'm gonna click on this drop down right here, and I'm gonna go all the way down to the bottom of the list where it says erase. And if I select that, you can see what happens there. It turns that shape into negative space against every other object beneath it. And that white area that you see showing in there, that white area is the white canvas showing through. Now the way this works is the erase blend mode erases that object from everything going all the way through to the canvas. So if I were to draw another object and I'll make this one a different color, I'll make this one green and I'll lower this to the bottom. You can see that this, what was previously a blue circle, is still appearing white because it's erasing through the red square and it's also erasing through the green rectangle that I created as a backdrop. Now, if I wanted to isolate this effect to just this object right here, just the red object, what I could do is I could select both of them so I have both of these objects selected and then group them together by going to Layer and selecting group, and now you can see the green rectangle is showing through that negative space there because now the blend mode is only applied to the object that is grouped with. And if I were to take this and change this, you can see that it's creating negative space in there. And the cool thing about this, like I said, this is non-destructive, so this shape still exists. If I were to expand this, I can take this shape and continue editing it if I'd like. And if I don't want this to be in negative space anymore, I can just change the blend mode back to normal and there we go, now it's a regular blue circle again. So let's have a look at a working example of when this sort of thing would come in handy. I'm gonna open up my stock menu by going to Window and selecting Stock. And you can see here I previously searched for Paper Texture, so go ahead and search for Paper Texture. I'm gonna take this one right here and just drag that onto the canvas. And then I'll close out of this window. And I will scale down this image. Let me first center it on the page and then I'll hold Command and Shift or Control and Shift if you're on Windows and scale that down. And then I'm gonna lock this so that I don't accidentally edit it with uh, the text that I'm about to create next. So I'm gonna grab my text tool. I'm gonna click and drag to draw some text. And for this demonstration, I'm just gonna write paper textures and I'm gonna select all of it and I'm gonna change the font to something else. I'll use Old Pines and then I'm just going to decrease the spacing between the letters by holding Option or Alt and using the left and right arrow keys. And I'll just adjust this a little more. Okay, there we go. And now I'm gonna convert this to curves. So I will go to Layer and select uh, Convert to Curves. And then I'll ungroup it by going to Layer and selecting Ungroup. And I'm gonna take these bottom letters right here and just move these over like this. And if you notice, I'm paying attention to where the letters are overlapping. This letter R is overlapping, or this letter R is overlapping this letter R and this letter E right here. And then we have these overlapping areas over here, which is what I'm going for. So now let's create an offset between these letters. First, I'm gonna take this letter R right here and I'm gonna raise this to the top. I'm gonna to right click it and go to arrange and select move to front. 
or you could just press command shift and the right bracket key or control shift and the right bracket key. And I'll access this over here in the layers menu. I'm gonna right click this and go to duplicate. And I'm gonna select the one beneath it and I'm just gonna make this a different color for now so we can see it. And then I'm gonna grab the contour tool and bring this handle to the right to increase the size of the offset. And once I do that, I'm gonna come up here to the blend mode and I'm gonna change this to erase. Now, as you can see, it's not just going through the letters, it's also going through the paper texture. So let's zoom out and I'm gonna select all of the letters and group them together by going to layer and selecting group. And now it's just isolated to this grouping of letters. And we can still work with this from within this group. All we have to do is expand the group in the layer menu right here by clicking this arrow. And now we have all of our objects. So this letter E right here, I don't want this to be beneath the, uh, the letter R. So let me raise that up. I'm gonna press command shift in the right bracket key to raise that up. There we go. And I want this letter T to overlap with this letter A. So let me take this and raise this to the top. Command shift and the right bracket key. And I'll come up here and I'll make a duplicate of this. And right off the start, I'm just gonna set the blend mode to erase right away. And then I'll grab the contour tool. And then I could just change the offset of this object just like that. And I can see the effect as it's being applied. And it's overlapping the letter E here, which I don't want. So I'm gonna select that letter E and raise that to the top. And then finally, I want this letter P to overlap the letter T over here. So I'm gonna select that and raise that to the top. And I'll come back over here into my layers right click that, duplicate, select the one beneath it and change the blend mode to erase. And now I can grab the contour tool or I still have it selected and then just bring that out like that. And I'm just gonna move this over to the left a little bit because it's, whoops, wrong tool. Let me grab the selection tool, there we go. And I'll move that over to the left a little bit because I don't want it touching the letter A over there. So there you go, you can see we end up with this effect right here. And if I wanna change this at any point, I could just go into the layer again, grab the contour tool. Like let's say for example, I don't like the size of that offset. I can just change it. Like I mentioned, this is non-destructive. And I'll do the same thing for the letter T. I'll make that a little larger. And then finally for the letter P, I wanna make sure everything is somewhat consistent here. Okay, good enough. So now, let me zoom out, let me collapse the group again. I'm gonna select the whole group and I'll enlarge that. And to finish the effect, I'm just going to set the entire group to soft light and then I will duplicate that so that it looks like it's printed onto the paper texture. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Affinity Designer Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Affinity Designer and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you wanna check that out. As always, thanks for watching.